getting on the set. Yeah. I don't know. It was really actually very confusing because you <laughs> did come out and explain it to us, and then I was just having a brain fart and completely. Uh, I don't believe that at all, Eddie. It's true. I, don't I, I was telling this guy, I was like, now I'm confused, man. Well, first of all, it's hard for us actors to do things like this. <laughs> to sit in chairs. Yeah, yeah. It is hard. It's very hard. I think I speak for everyone in this room when I say thank you guys so much for coming to San Jose. <laughs> I mean, which we'll discuss over the next hour. Don't rub it in. <laughs> it, it resonates so much with everyone. I mean, Eddie, let's kind of start with you. You know, John Connor, you're, you're, you have such a dynamic character because you're responsible basically for saving the world, yet you bring this innocent, childlike persona to the screen. And I'm just wondering, when you were first approached about the role, what did you know and what did, how did you sort of create the character? <laughs> Well, I was innocent because I was a kid. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, yeah, man, I mean, it, it was just kind of a fluke, man. I was, I was uh, you know, just hanging out. Mally Finn came up. I had no family acting or anything like that. And um, just went to auditions, and it slowly changed my life, man. So it's great. It's great. I'm glad, you know, Jim had confidence in me, man. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he, he does have such an eye for picking talent. And what was the what was the process? Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what was the process of being cast like? I imagine it was pretty arduous. Um. Yeah. I mean, dude, it, it, it's it's I don't know the things we manifest in our life. You know what I mean? I I, I always wanted to be an artist. I you know, um, and it's just. For whatever reason, it just came naturally. And I had Mally Finn, who was casting the movie. Um, she was such a big help, man. She, uh, you know, really kind of helped me out and kind of, you know, believed in me and sort of explained the, uh, the acting thing to me. And it just came naturally to uh, just sort of, and therapeutic to sort of, uh, you know, express my emotions on film. Well, you were amazing, and I'm so excited for, you know, Dark Fate and your return. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Michael. Michael. Over, over here. Uh, <laughs> you guys kick out for Michael. Michael. Thank you. In a way, my question is not so different for you, because you, you have this badass character who's also really vulnerable. And, you know, really, I, I'm just wondering, that's a, that's a very interesting dynamic in a leading man. Oftentimes it's, you know, the protagonist or the antagonist, but you manage to combine those two aspects. So I'm just wondering, how did you approach the character? Well, I didn't, I didn't combine the two. Jim Cameron combined the two. Uh, I was, you know, at the time, the, and I've said this before, but at the time, the outlook on that film, I, I'd been working quite a bit, and, you know, when I asked who directed this, Jim Cameron, who's he, nobody, he got fired off this, you know, Brian 3 for Roger Corman, who's Gail Hurd, she's Roger Corman, who's starring in it, Arnold Schwarzenegger, at that time, Arnold was not, you know, anywhere near being the governor of California. And, you know, <laughs> I wanted to work with Al Pacino and Dustin Hoffman, and um, you know, uh, but, you know. So, and then, you know, I got sent the script, and it's like that kind of time. It's just like, wow. But I felt like that character. That I felt like that character was a character that I could play really well. And whatever happened around me wasn't going to be my fault. You know? I, mean, I had no idea, you know, uh, until uh, uh, Arnold's option got picked up for Conan 2, and I got to spend three months with Jim Cameron and Stan Winston, who did the uh, special effects of Many Town Academy and one of them. It's not like the same thing. I got down there, and within a couple of hours or weeks, Jim Cameron, you know, this guy's pretty interesting, you know. He's pretty hardcore, he's more hardcore than I am, you know. And uh, I went down to Stan's work and I saw them working on it, and whatever, maybe it might not be really, really bad, so. It was. 
it turned out okay. It turned out, I think it turned out pretty good, right guys? You guys are so modest, Robert, your character obviously was a departure from what we knew as the Terminator. You know, and you were coming in and you, you were, it was just a completely different take on the machine. When was the first time you saw the special effects after you know the performance was done and, and you went in to look, and what were your thoughts? Yeah, it blew my mind uh, to see the, the work that ILM had done and uh, Steve Spaz Williams, Mark Dupay, uh, uh, of course under the tutelage of uh, James Cameron and Dennis Muir, and I think and it was it was really uh, an amazing process. It's just been brought to my attention by uh, Steve Spaz Williams that this was the first motion capture uh, done. So we, I guess, uh, James uh, invented that whole. Uh, process and they had painted uh, three inch squares all over you know my physique and did the run and did the walk and uh, and that was loaded into the computers but it was an interesting thing to be a part of and uh, it blew my mind I went to the center on the dome I think James bought us tickets probably bought you tickets too right Remember something like that yeah I went to the center on the dome the night it premiered uh, and took 20 friends. He had bought me like a block of seats, and it was the second time I saw it. And uh, it was it was really mind blowing to to see how it had all come together. It was an amazing thing because we had physical effects layered on the computer effects, and then the practical effects, and then what I did, and all that kind of stuff come together. I was very, very proud. It's actually a really good point, because, you know, in that era, most special effects were still done practically. So... Yeah, and they, and the way he, the way he layered that together, I think, and then, and with the, the CGI uh, element is what elevated the project even more so, and I think it's why everybody still... Uh, you know, loves Terminator 2. It's a, it's a great film. Oh, absolutely. And you're just amazing. Wow, you're very I, I was like uh, Eddie in the sense that uh, it was a pretty overwhelming experience to be picked up and put in that whole world. Uh, I was a complete unknown and uh, really, really struggling. So it was, a, it was a, an amazing thing to happen, but it was a, a whirlwind of things that were, uh, it was a kind of an overload. I mean, to meet Michael Bean and, and, and Linda and Arnold and, and be involved with something so big was pretty overwhelming. When and did uh, I, I kind of shared the same kind of experience with Eddie in that way. Of course, he was about 20 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> but I still felt, you know, I mean, it was, it was a really overwhelming thing. And, uh, Jeanette helped me out tremendously getting through it. <laughs> well, Jeanette, you had one of the best reveals on screen in in the franchise when you know you're on the phone and then we see the uh, the milk and the yeah. <laughs> you just you know you don't bother a woman when she's on the phone. I mean, it's very clear. So what was you know what was it like having that scene sort of explained to you? By the way, you have memorable scenes in a lot of your movies. Okay. You know, the diving board. Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. 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 Well, um, no, it was. Uh, I loved um, working with Xander Berkeley and that, that first scene, and you know the home life of the poor home life of the kid and these horrible foster parents. But um, I, it was interesting because I was brought to your apartment. I remember we got together. Dive. Yeah, the dive apartment, and yeah, you were over, pretty overwhelmed with what was going on in your life. But we worked together because I had to be him, and so he explained to me, you know, what you were working with, the physicality and sort of the insect, you know, idea of the praying mantis. So when there was a reveal, it, it came physically um, before you, you know, the reveal to the arm, right, right. The end of the arm, right. And I had no idea it was in the, the arm because it was a practical effect on my, you know, on my end. I I made the um, the dummy arm. And on the, the day of the shooting, it was just me with my left arm held behind my back and the guys crouching behind me. It was, you know, all practical effects. And then poor Xander Berkeley with the, the thing down his mouth. He was like, exactly. But being able to see it, you know, it was explained to me by Dennis, like what was going to happen and the computer and all this. But I, you know, I, just, I saw it the first time when everyone else did. And it was pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing. It's, it's very memorable. 
Um, Kristana, no pressure, you're coming into the franchise, third movie, first female Terminator. The sexiest Terminator. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I um, I know that you physically did a lot of preparation, and what was really intriguing to me is that it wasn't just like stunt training and stuff, you actually worked with a mime. Can you yeah. kind of fill us in about that? Sure. Um, I did a lot of training for the role. Um, I did weight training. I had a nutritionist. I put on about 15 pounds of muscle mass and got my body fat down to that of an Olympic athlete. Um, I did Krav Maga, which is Israeli martial arts. I trained sprinting in heels um, at the UCLA track. And I remember these, like, no, these students came past and they just looked at me and they looked at my coach and they're like, man, your coach is cold. <laughs> They had no idea. Um, and uh, then I worked with the LAPD in weapons training to work with the 45. And uh, then Jonathan Moscow said, why don't you work with a mind coach? And it was really the icing on the cake for the training because what the mind coach did was help eliminate any human signs um, like showing exertion while running or blinking while firing a weapon. Um, and we worked a lot with internal energies on different uh, materials that we'd be touching. So each, each material would kind of trigger some other uh, internal movement or, or feeling. Well, it was, I mean, it's very evident that you did extensive work and so you, it was amazing. It came across really well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think as I was preparing for this panel, I, I was I think you have the most memorable on screen mullet ever. Yeah, I was just gonna say in, in case anybody was wondering I was the kid with the mullet. <laughs> <laughs> it's that you were the kid with the mullet. But you have, you know, you were a really experienced actor at that time and yeah. you know, tons of different projects and stuff. But what was what was it like for you? Did you know the enormity of the film? Oh yeah, for sure. You did. For yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. It was just you know, it was awesome to be there and uh, just be a part of, of something like this. And uh, you know, it was Having the, the little bit that I did, like, uh, I was there the day that they launched, like, the semi into the wash, because it was like, uh, you know, uh, just be around in case we need to get some shots of, you know, you guys on a bike or, you know, doing something. So I was there for a lot of, like, just really cool stuff. So for me, that was the, like, you know. Was that, would that be your most memorable day? Oh, yeah. That? You know, that was, you know, launch a semi truck into the wash. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. And the crazy thing, it was like, it was like a mile from my house. So the week before, I was trying to get to high school, right? I'm driving my car, and there's like movie trucks, they're setting up, and I'm going, what freaking movie, piece of crap movie are they filming here? What is going that on? is blocking my morning commute, and then they gave me the location. I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's a good movie. I've got a good feeling about this one. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we're going to open it up to audience questions, because I know you guys have just as many questions as I do, and while they're sort of lining themselves up there. Everybody in this room loves the Terminator franchise. They love you guys. What did you guys, yeah, you can clap, you can clap. What did you guys geek out about or what do you enjoy in your spare time? Like it could be yoga or a certain type of music or what, what, what passions do you guys have? Uh, I have five boys and the youngest one is four. So that pretty much Takes up. You're good. <laughs> I'm good. I have a lot of fun with them all, and um, that's that's my life. Danny. Yeah, about the same. I, I I like to I play music, so I do that, and then I have I have a 20 year old and an 8 year old, so you know. Yeah, nice, a nice friend there. Yeah, we wanted a babysitter, so we decided to hold off until <laughs> so, until that worked itself out. So. Yeah, Christina. Um, I'm an equestrian, I love to ride horses, um, and uh, I have a three-year-old son as well, and uh, it's really the best role I'll ever play, is motherhood. Absolutely. Jeanette? Well, we see we're doing the kid things. I have a 30-year-old. Woo! That's a child ride, yes. Um, and, 
and then uh, 22 and 20. But um, I uh, run a chain of bra stores, so I deal with that. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Chain of what? Bra oh. Yeah, called Jeanette Ross. Brozier. Oh, Ross. 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 Oh, Ross.
Mr. Patrick. Hey there. Hey, I enjoyed your work in the TV series Scorpion as Kate. And I was sorry that it was canceled after four years. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I wanted to ride that one into the sunset. <laughs> if they had a chance to bring it back, would you like to see it come back as either a two-hour movie, a limited series, or bring it back as a full series? Uh, if they were to bring it back, I would bring it back as a full series. Yeah. That way I get to for more episodes. <laughs> Good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Edward, I've got a question about Terminator Dark Fate. So excited that you're coming back. It's fantastic. Thank you. What can you reveal about your uh, you know coming back? And is it maybe only gonna be you know CG likeness or are you yourself too gonna be in it? I'm not allowed to say anything, actually. <laughs> um but yeah, um, but uh, yeah, man, I mean, it's uh, it's a small role, but it's, you know, I'm in there, man. I'm in there for sure. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What was, I mean, it's not necessarily a call you anticipate, you know, getting, even to know there would be another Terminator, you know, on oh, our face. Dude, so what know? was it like to find out that you were going to be part of this? Like a blessing, man. I, I, I've, uh, very excited, you know, like really, uh, yeah, I was kind of turning my life around at that point. So, I mean, it was uh, it was kind of a good call to get, you know, I kind of felt like I got a sort of gift from all that, you know. Plus, I I was supposed to do the other Terminator, and I done fucked that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, man. So, yeah, it's good, it's good. You know what, though, you look great now. I'm really proud of you. Thank you, thank you very much. Hi, hello. Well, my name is, is uh, Christian. I just want to say thank you. You completed my uh, childhood for watching all those Terminator movies. And my question is for the cast, if you have a favorite moment while filming the Terminator movies. Favorite moment from uh, the set? I remember us all going to the cast dinner, like, when we all first met. Were you there? I think you were, right? Like, yeah. It was, I, I, it was like on Laurel Canyon somewhere. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, that was kind of cool, man. It was uh, kind of my first experience with meeting everybody, and uh, I mean, the whole thing was just a trip, man. It was cool. Um, I remember a moment where Arnold and I were doing a fight scene, and uh, we, the director, Jonathan, yelled cut, and we were tangled in some kind of a strange embrace, and Arnold just started dancing with me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think that's on the, uh, the blooper reel on the DVD, maybe, but he's a, he's a big practical jokester, so that was fun on him. <laughs> I remember um, the uh, the last time you see me when I'm in the vat of hot oil, which actually was t gallons of baby oil and powdered sugar. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was incredibly soft and moisturized for the next couple of years. Um, but, you know, <laughs> but it was it was freezing that day, and I remember I got in, and they could only do it once because I had a wig because I couldn't do it, and um. They had a, a, like a frogman in there to, for safety, but then Jim got in because he was worried that I was scared. And he said, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get in, in there too. It was warm and we just kind of like waited around inside and then I had to go in and whip around and then take up like a, an hour shower to get it off me. So, uh, Yo, dude, like actually I remember that and I remember they said it was like made out of sugar and shit. I so badly wanted to eat it. <laughs> Really interesting, but it was weird. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You kind of shared your moment. Um, you know, I, for me, it was uh, the premiere. Being able to see like what the finished product, because it's like reading the script, and then I, you know, I wasn't on set for very long, but to see like the words that I read, like to finally see, you know, what the what what Robert was gonna do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it was. You didn't know. It was like, uh, you know, he turns to metal. And it's like, oh, I kind of think I imagine what this is going to look like. And then 
Like, holy smokes, that was really cool. Yeah. Um, now I got to go to bed with Lou in the Hamilton. <laughs>
I just go sit in the tunnel and <laughs> recollect. What was the question? I don't know. <laughs> At least, at least once, and there are some that I have not that I should show you. Yeah. Just absolutely. Some of them we did together. The good ones. You want to watch at least once. I'm going to admit, at least once. I mean, you want to see what the hell you did. <laughs> if it's any good or not. And then if it really wasn't going to be good, it was like, oh, I don't want to see it. <laughs> There are shitload of films I have not watched. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Okay, first of all, this is my very first convention and my very first panel. And my dad loves your the Terminator franchise. So seeing you guys in person, you know, when, I tell, when, I, when I tell my dad, he's just going to go all crazy. <laughs> okay. But my, my question is for all of you guys. Oh god, it's my first time doing this. You're doing great. You're doing great. Alright. So like what 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 TV shows do you guys watch? It could be any genre, comedy, drama, animation, live action, anything. And like how how does it help you guys? Like how does it inspire you guys to like do better in life and stuff? So favorite favorite shows? For whatever reason. Bosch, Titus Welder. He's a fantastic actor. Great writing. Amazon Prime. <laughs> Titus Welder. I just uh, I just uh, we watched Deadwood, which, which Titus was on. And, uh, amazing, amazing series, and it was great. I uh, I just watched. Uh, it took me a while, but I'm a huge Twin Peaks fan. I watched the new one. Oh yeah! And... It's pretty dope. <laughs> um, Ozark. Yeah, it's such a good show. The writing is so good. The characters are so rich. The cinematography is beautiful. Um, yeah, it, it's an inspiring show. I saw the, the guy from Mythbusters. That I like it. it, 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 it like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I like that show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a, it's been on my mind. Yeah. YouTube. <laughs> All right, thank you. And, and tell your, you can tell your dad they all say hi. Hey, Dad. <laughs> hi. How's it going? So speaking of YouTube, uh, I make videos for a living on YouTube, and Terminator 2 especially was a huge inspiration for me. I actually made a Terminator 3 home video with my brother, and it was horrible, but yeah, so now I do that for a living, so I want to say thank you first off. Especially, Eddie, you're like, I wanted to be you when I was a kid. I'm an 81 baby, so it's like, I'm just a couple years younger, but a question uh, for Mr. Robert Patrick. The T-1000 has a very distinct run, and I was curious where the inspiration came from that. It reminds me of The Flash a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely. I wonder where it came from. Uh, it came out of the training with Uzi Gaw, which was the uh, Israeli Special Forces Commando that was assigned to me, that uh, took me through uh, training uh, before the film. And I think my training was like three or four months prior to uh, production. and. Uh, we, we wanted to figure out a way to just eliminate all wasted motion and just target uh, acquisition and locking on a target and then figuring out how to, you know, keep your mouth shut and breathe through your nose. And, uh, it was a lot of conditioning, a lot of running, but uh, best shape I've ever been in my life. And, uh, you know, I felt like I could run through a wall by the time we were done. And he really meant it got in my head and made me believe I was a T-1000. It was crazy. <laughs> uh, but it was Gall, and um, there was a, uh, I think there was a, uh, I believe there was a track runner. I saw some videos of him. Ben Foster, I believe, was a guy. But any of those guys that did the 100-yard dash, 
it's sort of based on thereafter the way they, they approach it. And how did you control your sweat? Because like the pores have nothing coming out. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, that was clean, that was clean living. <laughs> saying you felt like you could just run through a wall. I also had that feeling when I was doing the training that I could punch through anything, and I did. I actually punched through two windows. Once I got locked out of my house, I was like, oh, hey, no problem, bang! <laughs> that is it, how easy. And then the second time, I got locked out on a friend's roof. This time, it was one of those chicken wire windows. Oh, bang! Still got in. <laughs> you know, because of the practical effects in part. Um, what do you think resonates, if you had to just give one or two words, what do you think resonates about the film that people still are connecting to it? Well, for T2, I think it's a story. I think it was, uh, you know, it's a beautiful plot and uh, rich characters, and I just think it was a, a, a fascinating story, and it's just one of those things where everything came together. It's, the, it's a part of the moment of the time. It's, uh, it's, you know, uh, technology taking over. It, 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 I think that's the reason, yeah. Yeah, Michael, what do you think? Uh, I just felt that the Terminator had a heart. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's, it's a story about love as well. Yeah, you know? it's, a, it's a wonderful love story. And uh, that's, yeah, that's... Oh, yeah. That's timeless. That's, I, think, yeah. I think there's also something about the time travel aspect that people fantasize about or can connect with. Mm -hmm. And the fact, too, that the Terminators look human but are not, there's that eerie quality of, that gets under people's skin, like, could this really happen? You know, could are there Terminators walking around that we don't know about right now? You know, there's that relatability aspect. They would be here <laughs> in this valley. <laughs> sure. Hi. So, um, so James Cameron has a reputation, uh, reputation as a hard ass. For the original cast, you had any stories about that? And for the others, you had any horrible experiences with that? Did you? I, I gotta say, I gotta say, man, Jim was a, I mean, I love Jim Cameron, dude. Um, he, I was spoiled because basically, I, my first director was one that I felt 100% safe with, you know, and he really knew what he was doing, and, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what I have to say. I mean, well, it's interesting, I did three films with him, and I was just thinking now all three of them had um, children in them. And I saw him with Carrie Henn, how he dealt with her, and she'd never been acting before, and um, how he dealt with you, and how he dealt with um, the child who played my son in, in Titanic. And that little boy had never had never done any film, and we, once we did the first line, and Jim said, go again, he went, what? Didn't I do it? Good? And he stopped everything. He, he started to giggle and he said, please, be quiet. And he went down and he talked to that little boy and he said, okay, um, this is what happens in the movie. We do this shot and then I'm going to turn around and you're going to do it again and do it again and we're going to shoot your mom and shoot your... Can you do that? Is that okay? And he's like, mm, is it okay? And he was so gentle and so kind. So don't believe any of those other stories here. I will say one funny thing that freaked me out. It's like the very first day when we were shooting, uh, we were shooting the scene next to the car with Arnold. I, I don't know if he's like playing guns or something. And um, it was just my first thing that I had done. I mean, I was really nervous. And uh, Jim came up to me and he was like, you're doing great, man. I'm really proud of you. That was, that was amazing. And then he looks at me and he's like, did you put some fucking chapstick on your lips? Like, what the hell? I was like, yeah. It's was like, fuck. <laughs> So bad, but even that, he was he was pretty gentle with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
So that was day number one. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Uh, hello. This is actually my first time doing something like this, and it's a huge honor to meet you guys in person. And my question is for you guys. Um, what was it like to work with uh, Schwarzenegger? What was it like to work with Schwarzenegger? Yeah, I'm actually, an interesting experience for you guys. Dude, I mean, it's, it's, it was amazing. Being my age, you know, having grown up with, uh, you know, Predator and Terminator and Total Recall and all that shit. I mean, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was insane. It was overwhelming. Um, Arnold oh, is a, such a smart guy. He's, uh, you know, I mean, if you, if, I mean, he, this guy is pretty much he became the world's greatest bodybuilder. Became like one of the most famous hey. actors. Became governor. I mean, this, there's, he's got a real um, kind of aura uh, around him. And um, I don't know. I found it really inviting. I, I, I really was glad to uh, get to know Arnold on, on that movie. Um, I had a great time. Thank you. You know what, and everybody had, chem all three movies, everybody just had such great chemistry together. You know, it's, it's, sometimes you watch a movie and you're like, oh, the cast may or may not have liked each other, but it really looks like everybody truly enjoyed being around each other. So, hi. Next question. Hi. Can, can I just add one more thing to that? Sure. Um, I just wanted to make sure through all of our fight sequences that I didn't hit $30 million man in the face. <laughs> That would be bad, Tristana. Just <laughs> hit your mark. Yeah, he was he was awesome, and I learned a lot by working with him through the stunt sequences, for sure. Dude, he hit me in the face. <laughs> when we were in the in the river, and he puts his like shotgun up. There was one where he, it hit me in the head. <laughs> Those things happen, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hit the shotgun with the I hit him in the ego. back. One time, hit me with a sword by accident in a movie. So, you know, those things happen. Arnold had his shoulder behind him in that scene in the still room. Well, I got that big iron bar or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm wailing away from him, and he's got his arm, like, you know, back there, and there was a spot I was supposed to hit. And there was a way I was supposed to do it. And then Jim had said, do it like St. Michael. Slain the dragon, all that. And I'm wailing away and whack. And he turns around and looks at me and Robert. That was my real arm. And I'm shit, I don't like kidding you. I'm, I'm, I'm like standing like this. Shit. Fuck, we got that fight scene to do later on. <laughs> All this is going on in my head. Oh, shit. I wonder if he's going to pay me back. Oh, God. I'm scared to death. He's a, he's a sweet guy to work with, really, as a, a professional. Because, well, number one, he didn't cut the tape. You know, got that tape. But he was a very encouraging guy to work with. Uh, uh, you know, all the fight scenes I had with him, he was. You know, and he'd see you doing something and give you a thumbs up. So he's one of those guys that kind of uh, makes you feel like you're doing a good job. And the same with uh, uh, Jim. You know, I mean, it, I love what you said. That I, you know, I love Jim Cameron. It's it's true. I mean, he, the guy works your ass off, works your ass really, really fucking hard. <laughs> but I went about it probably like you did. I don't know. You know, when when Terminator came out in 1984, I was still becoming. I'd seen you guys doing all that and later to be working with I didn't want to fuck up. <laughs> so when I was training with Uzi Gall, I was just like, man, I, I, I jumped into the military aspect of it. So by the time I showed up on the set for T2, I didn't say more than yes, sir, or no, sir. I wouldn't talk to Eddie. I wouldn't talk to Arnold. You know what I mean? I was like, I was the fucking T1 guy. <laughs> and I would fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna run through the yes sir. <laughs> Got a problem with that? No sir. <laughs> I love it. Hi. Hi. I'm 
I'm Kat. I have a question for Michael, but while I was waiting to ask it, I heard Eddie say, you know, you fucked up real big and not getting to be in Terminator 3. I just wanted to say, sorry to fuck up. You are our John Connor, and welcome back to the world. Anyone else have any memorable blooper moments? 
All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Ed from Cupertino. Just, I suppose this question would be more towards uh, Eddie or Robert, maybe with Dan and Jeanette. But of course, in the scene, Eddie throw the arm and shit at the um, bat of molten, uh, molten metal. As we all know, Arnold's left arm, of course, is left into the machinery. So I was wondering what background you guys might have on that. We've seen this assumption that it was destroyed too much, it wouldn't even matter, or was it an oversight? Um, what kind of explanation we have for that? Nerd. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
Thank you. And